There it is. <laughs> Chris Cornell. You may not recognize the name right away, but just think of the songs Black Hole Sun, Rusty Cage, or even Hunger Strike. You know, the one uh, with Eddie Vedder morosely singing in the background. I'm going hungry! <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, Chris is often credited as the founder of the grunge movement. He had a long career, which included Soundgarden, Temple of the Dog, Audio Slave, and Solar Ventures. He had long, curly, dark hair ocean blue eyes, and perfect features. Someone once said, women want to make love to him, men want to be him. He was the perfect rock star. For more than 25 years, I followed him like a pu little puppy, or as he calls it in one of his songs, a flutter girl. This is the story of how I met Chris Cornell, my rock god. This is how I transformed from a flutter girl to a falcon, how I seized the day and went for it, alone. Meeting him was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had. Imagine pining over something or someone for decades from afar, then sitting right in front of them. Chris became real. Someone I held and told that he meant the world to me. The first time I heard Chris's voice, I was instantly hooked. I remember playing Soundgarden over and over again on my portable cassette player in high school. I remember attending the early concerts when Chris still stage dove into the crowd. Such great memories. Then in 1997, in my junior year of high school, Soundgarden broke up. It was a bad dream, but Chris kept writing and performing music, which was more than good enough for me. Fast forward about 15 years, Soundgarden reunites, and Chris is doing double duty with his solo tour. I saw him four times that tour. I thought that would surely be it, but no. One day, scrolling through available Chris's meet and greets online, as I often did to torture myself, I read sold out again and again and again. Then, wait a minute, I see one available for Regina, Canada. And yes, it is pronounced like the body part. Where the fuck is Regina, Canada? I think to myself, doesn't matter. I had already traveled the country to hear this man. In eight months time, I saw him in Houston, Dallas, St. Louis, and Charlotte, North Carolina. So why not Regina, Canada? I click purchase, put it in the cart, and leave the computer. I didn't put my financials in because it was so much money and I didn't want to be too spontaneous but I kept thinking, go for it. And sure enough, the next morning, I wake up with a reminder email about the purchase still in my cart. I think to myself, it's still there. This is fate's way of telling me to go. Almost instinctively and impulsively, I continue the transaction. 25 years of loving Chris is enough. Now is the time to finally meet him. I scramble to try to book a flight to Regina, fucking Canada, then I realize I booked a tr the trip for the wrong day. This critical error must be due to me contracting that very rare but um, incurable disease called going to meet my favorite rock star amnesia. This disease also led me to forget that my passport had expired and I had already booked an out-of-state trip with my friend that same weekend. But none of that matters. Uh, fast forward to July 25th, 2016, day of departure. It's like the universe is telling me not to go. The parking lot machine eats my credit card. My flight takes off late because of storms. And once in Canada, I literally have to run to customs and to my final boarding call. But I get there and I am finally going to meet Chris Cornell. On the big day, I wander the quaint city of Regina, Canada, to kill time when finally, after a gourmet dinner of takeout Chinese food, I get a text. It reads, hey, Emily, Chris sees security here. Please meet me at the merchandise table at 7.30 with your guest, thanks. Shit just got real. And 
uh, I don't have a guest. Um, I shower and get ready, and then I get another text. Our flight is delayed. Let's meet at 7.45 instead. Don't worry, you will definitely meet him before he goes on. Oh my god! I take the Regina public bus system to get to the venue. I cling to the three items I'm taking to Chris for dear life. The first is a very well-worn DVD of Singles. Singles is a romantic comedy in which single Chris has a couple of cameos. In the first, he bops his head to a blasting car radio. And then the second is a live performance with Soundgarden. I also cling to my very, very, very well-worn Higher Truth CD. This is Chris's most recent release. I've listened to it non-stop for more than a year. It spoke to me on so many levels. I had to tell him how great it was. The third item is a framed quote from Chris's favorite poem, poet, Sylvia Plath. Her words are dark as fuck, just like his. If you haven't read it, just Google the poem Daddy and you'll see what I mean. Inside the frame is a handwritten letter. I don't remember the fine details, but it sums up like this. You mean the world to me. Thanks for the great music. I checked it inside the frame. Once at the box office, I tell a nice older lady who couldn't give two fucks about who Chris Cornell is, I'm on the band's guest list. This is it, I scream to myself. Finally, I get to get the real fan treatment. I stalk my text message box, then at 7.45, another text. Just left the airport, be there soon. Soon. He'll be here soon. I've been waiting for over an hour, so soon felt so soon. Before I know it, security guy is right in front of me and says, there you are, let's go, follow me. And so it began. I look ahead, grasping the items I brought for Chris and walk one foot in front of the other, up some stairs, weaving through the crowds, dodging dudes, juggling beers, taking deep breaths, heading to and through the black doors, that lead to the other side where Chris is. We go to the first dressing room on the left, which is a narrow hallway. It's small, carpeted, and lit with dim fluorescent. Security guy grabs two drab, brown cushioned metal chairs and puts them right in front of each other. The room and space are so small, the chairs so close together. I cannot believe I'm going to be sitting so close to Chris fucking Cornell. Oh my God. Then he says he's going to get Chris. Then I almost fail to breathe. I have to actually remember to breathe. This is it. No time for primping, no time for remembering. I turn and moments later, Chris turns the corner and almost glides into the room like a rock god apparition. There he is standing right in front of me, hand outstretched. We shake hands and I place my other hand on his and he smiles, he hugs me. We sit, the three items I brought for autographs are next to us on the table. And before I know it, I look over, the door is mostly closed and we're sitting directly in front of each other in this tiny space just the two of us. Chris Cornell and I are alone with a closed door, although very briefly, I had him all to myself, contained, no one else around. How cool is that? The meet and greet called for two tickets, but I couldn't find someone else to go to Canada with me. Go figure. Deep down, I'm glad to have Chris all to myself. Maybe my five minutes would turn into 10. I didn't time it, but I think it did. What did we talk about during that time? It's kind of a blur, but mostly about family and music. As we're sitting, I am just trying to take it all in. Looking at him without trying to stare, but trying to remember every detail. I don't want to forget anything. This is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like I said, I I've transformed from Flutter Girl to Falcon a hardcore fan who would go to any lengths to tell this man how much his voice means to me. I didn't want to blow it. I remember his brick red t-shirt with little holes. Surely a millionaire could afford a shirt with no holes. I remember his green tinted glasses 
In recent years, he'd taken to wear dark glasses all the time. I wish he would have taken them off. He also had big black boots. Those were his signature. He always had such great style. He never overdid it. Well, maybe back in the day when duct taped shorts and fanny packs. <laughs> As we were talking, I show him a video of my young son, son singing one of his recent songs. He holds the phone and chuckles softly. I give him his gift, explaining the quote inside the frame. I said I picked the quote by Sylvia Plath, his favorite author, because it reminds me to stay in the moment, which I was trying to do just then. I tell him I have two children and their ages and that I am a third grade teacher. I tell him about the handwritten letter I wrote that's inside the frame, and he looks it over and looks for it. I laugh and say, it's inside the frame, and he can open it later. Now, I wish I would have taken it out. He seemed like he wanted to read it right then. Then come the autographs with the gold Sharpie. As he's scrawling his tr trademark signature on the cover of Higher Truth, I can't even remember if I told him my name. Yet here he is signing it, correct spelling and everything. Then it's time for the picture. We stand in front of the door. We stand so close. He puts his arm around my right shoulder. I put mine on his left hip. It all seems so natural, like we've met before. As I turn to gather my stuff, he bent to hug me very close. His hair was right next to my face, and I clung to him gently and breathed his sweet smell in deeply. I told him, thank you. From the bottom of, bottom of my heart, your music means the world to me. I am a loyal fan forever. Thank you so much. He looked at me after that and said, thank you, with such simple sincerity and grace. And then it's over. I don't want to write about any regrets because I have none. Sure, I wish I'd talk more about one thing or another. I wish I had requested a specific song, but none of that matters. I told him what really matters, how much his music me and voice mean to me. It all adds up to one of the best, most surreal nights of my life. I kept thinking about it all concert long and crying, tears literally streaming as I thought about that moment. And now, less than three months after Chris completed suicide, I am grateful that I lived an amazing dream come true. I met the most amazing artist, Chris Cornell. Thank you for your grace and sweet, humble nature. Thanks for the hugs and talk and autographs. It was so worth it. And I still wonder if you read my note. As Sylvia Plath said in her frame, remember, remember this is now and now and now. Live it, feel it, cling to it. I want to become acutely aware of all that I've taken for granted.